Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be a little bit softer. I know you guys were having a party last night, right? Did everybody have fun? I think we should have another round of applause for Integrity Check. Could Integrity Check please stand up? I heard they have a global following. So we have a lot in store for you today. By the way, there are some seats up front if you want to come down from the back. We have a lot in store for you today and I'm going to get you warmed up. Today we're going to start by talking about part of our mission. I'm not going to go through our vision statement or all the things we do. Today I want to focus on developers. Developers and innovation. If you think about it, all of our businesses are supported by the talent, the creativity, the innovation, the hard work, the difficult challenges that our developers bring to the table. So our developers are really the focus of what today is all about. In fact, I'm declaring, since I have the microphone, today is National Developer Day, well, at least for this conference. To all the developers, today's for you. So I want to talk about how we empower developers, and we're going to get into some of that. But it's not just about developers. It's about the organizations that they support. So developers can build awesome solutions, but if it weren't for sales and marketing and all the other functions in the business, you know, they wouldn't see the light of day. So we're going to talk about empowering organizations in order to achieve great results, achieve client success. That's what this morning's all about. So let me start with a journey that I think relates to the challenges developers and businesses have. So follow along. You know, I'm, I have to admit, I'm old enough to remember punch cards and mainframes. And I stayed up late at night in the library because our college didn't have a computer, computer science department. We had an electrical engineering department. So I'd have to wait in line for my punch cards to go through. And oh my god, if I had a bug, I had to fix it and wait in line again for an hour. But mainframes were powerful. Then came mini computers. And people said, well, the mainframe's more powerful than a mini computer. But the mini computer error brought many possibilities. It brought multitasking, so many processes can run at once. It brought lower cost for computing. And a lot of software companies, especially software companies here, including InterSystems, started in that era. But you may or may not remember the debate back and forth. The mini computer is a good thing, or should, is mainframe here to stay? That was followed by client server. So mini computers were great, but you could bring power of computing to the desktop. I'll give you an example. You know, I started with mini computers. I'd write these great graphics like snow scenes, you know, just for fun, just a little programming to, you know, to have a little fun. You know, snow scenes and beach scenes. My favorite graphic characters were Asterisk and Tilda. You move to client server, you get rich graphics, you get gaming, you get a better user experience. It was profound. But there was a tug of war, tug of war between client server and mini computing. So we adapted. Developers adapted, businesses adapted. And then came the internet. And the internet really changed things, as we all know. It allowed us to connect organizations together over the internet. It created platforms. It made learning really simple. You know, if we go back to Don's presentation on Monday, you know, you just type in one question and you get a lot of answers, whether it's Google or other search engines. So the internet brought a lot of new companies too. Some of you remember the dot-com era, I'm sure. But we adapted and we changed. Development changed. Businesses changed. And then came cloud, not too long ago. 
And cloud opened up a lot of possibilities too. The opportunities were to scale up and scale down, to provide new solutions to customers without having to worry about installs and infrastructure. So it brought a lot of benefits, but there was also a lot of concern too. So debates happened about how do we take advantage of cloud computing and is it a good thing for our business? I'll talk later about what InterSystems is doing with cloud. And AI has been around for a while. AI and machine learning are really nothing new. But gener generative AI is definitely causing a lot of those same conversations. Right? So that's the area we're moving into now. If we think about how companies adapted all throughout these inflection points, many did, many didn't. You can think of lots of companies, big names. Everybody knows companies that didn't make it through all of these inflection points. I'll, I'll mention one company because it's a brand name. We all know it, Epic. So Epic started in the mini computer era, and they successfully adapted their application throughout all of these. They have customers in cloud. They have their own Epic Cloud as well. And I can't speak, I won't speak for what Epic is doing today or tomorrow in AI, but if you go to the website, I'm sure you can find out you know, what their plans are and what, they're, you know, what they have to say. So the key here is developers and businesses have to adapt together. So today's environment for developers is really different than it was even five to 10 years ago. Software as a service. You know, so developers, I'm sure most of you are working in agile uh, type of DevOps, you know, pipeline type of development environments where you make a change and you don't have to wait a year for it to come out in a release. Yeah, you know, intersystems were operating that way too. And the demand for data from all over, the uh, demand continues to go up exponentially. I love Don Woodlock's presentation about the fusion of data and users because that really speaks to this point. Developers have to think about how do you fuse rich data that you can act on without having a pile of data to sort through in order to allow a user to do something. And then we come to AI. And this is a bit of an unknown. It's both an opportunity and a peril to some. So when we talk about AI, is it gonna fix humanity? Is it gonna overthrow humanity? Is it gonna save humanity? Is it gonna subvert hum humanity? Is it gonna enhance and enlighten humanity? Is it gonna run humanity? It's perfectly clear what we need to do, right? We don't know. So we're exploring. I think the key thing here is understand what the benefits are and how you can bring that into your solution and do it in a way that makes sense to help your business and your solutions transition into that next inflection point. It's now gonna give you some insight, and I love to give insight, and I'm pretty transparent, on what InterSystems is doing in terms of innovation. And this isn't just, just our developers. This is much more than that. So we're investing a lot in healthcare. Of course, you know, we are the dominant technology for healthcare, but we can't rest on our laurels. You've heard in the last couple of days all the things we're doing. So we're enhancing the user experience. We're working increasingly with payers, with uh, medical devices, life sciences, analytics, uh, digital transformation. That's an interesting one. What does digital transformation mean in healthcare? It means something a little different to every organization we talk to. But my sense is most of healthcare, not just in the US but throughout the world, is thinking about digital innovation. To some it means making things work more seamlessly. To some it means reaching out to people in the community or the region who aren't patients 
but making them aware of what services you have to offer because they may be patients someday. And if they're patients, you hope they're gonna be your patient. So digital transformation could be in that type of outreach. Digital transformation means a lot of different things to organizations, but we're all going through it. The end result is the experience for the patient and the experience for clinicians has to be a lot better, and there's a lot of potential for that. And beyond healthcare, we see digital transformation in indus industries like financial services. Remember the data fabric story from yesterday? It was interesting. But also supply chain, mining, lots of other industries. So we're breaking through in other markets, not just healthcare. And in terms of cloud services, you heard a lot about what we're offering yesterday. I was watching some of the attendee comments this morning, and I saw one that caught my attention. It said, SQL is a service, uh, machine learning is a service. Yeah, I'll take some of that. So there's definitely an appetite for more services. And we're doing a lot to provide all of our products as a service to make it easy for you and easy for your customers uh, to deploy them. And then lastly, we want to make sure that InterSystems remains an awesome place to work. So let me talk about this for a few minutes. You may have heard this before, but it's 10 times harder to get into InterSystems than it is to get into MIT. We're very selective, but we hire really talented, bright people, and we want all of you to have a wow experience. Wow in a good way, by the way. When you meet with anybody from InterSystems, we hire people and put them in into an environment where they can be successful. Our philosophy is create an environment where creative people can be successful and step back. So this is um, a little insight into what we're doing with innovation. And we've been a member of the MIT Corporate Innovation Program, along with some other companies, for at least five years. Now, what MIT is doing is interesting. It's not so much about innovation per se, it's about the process of innovation. If they have 10 teams broken up to do innovations, and two are successful and two aren't, what's the difference? What makes one more successful than the other? So by working with these other companies in MIT, we've learned some things. So we thought, why don't we create our own innovation program inside the company? And give you some insight into how this works. So we have an opportunity for anybody in the company to come up with an idea. We want transformation, transformational type of innovations. Um, any idea will count though. So it doesn't have to necessarily be transformational, but that's really what we want. The idea is going to a common place where everybody can see it, and people in the company vote on it. And the ideas that get the top votes get a chance to go before a set of judges, and judges are in different roles in the company, and they look at the idea and say, does it make sense to proceed? And if it does, then we allow time and opportunity for people to go off and work on it. If it doesn't make sense to do that, but it's a great idea, then it goes back into kind of the line of business. So things get folded into our product roadmaps. We make improvements in some of our services, uh, making all of our uh, services that customers see, like support and education, you know, making those more accessible um, is one of the examples of something that's more of an incremental innovation Definitely a worthwhile thing to do, but it's not transformative. So we've been to, through two rounds of this so far, so it's still pretty new. And one of the leading ideas that came out of this relates to an entirely new strategy for fire. Now, I'm not gonna announce what that is because it's still very much a work in process, but it really, really has our attention and it's created a lot of energy around it. Right now we're in round three, and the focus for round three is on AI. 
what can we do in our products and services to take advantage of the opportunity with generative AI? So some of the things you've seen this week are examples of what we're thinking. We're also innovating with our clients. So I want to kind of turn attention from InterSystems back to our clients. Yeah, we're thinking about our products in a new way, kind of new business models, where you have an existing application that's been running great, and you've been going through those uh, transition points of different errors and doing great, but you want to take advantage of a new service and kind of use that in conjunction with your application. Health Connect Cloud is a good example of that because we have many customers saying, you know what, I want to use Health Connect Cloud for interoperability for this purpose to enhance my application. Um, that's terrific. Our other cloud services have the opportunity to do that too. And then in terms of enhancing the developer experience and enhancing the business, you know, this example is education. But it goes much further than education. By the way, we've had a tremendous amount of feedback, positive feedback about what we've done recently in terms of education with online learning and searching uh, and videos and accessibility. So I appreciate that feedback. Tell us more of what we can do in the area of education. We're definitely interested. But we also have a vibrant and very active developer community. We have an open exchange that has hundreds, I haven't checked this morning, but maybe close to a thousand different applications. We have ideathons that we work on. We have hackathons. Uh, we talk to customers about changing business models. You know, maybe you want to move from a license model uh, that's by user to more of a subscription, uh, more of a consumption model. And having access to the right data. And again, you saw customer, heard customer stories this week about how we've worked together to make that data available. We're also doing a lot with startups. And actually, I should let you know, today there are 47 startups that are here just for today from the Miami area, in addition to startups that have been here for the whole three days. So, we have an initiative with startups to help them. Sometimes we provide a little bit of funding, but this is not, we don't view this as a financial outcome. It's more, can we help them be successful? And if so, maybe they'll be a customer. That's kind of our approach. So we're doing a lot this year with, with startups, and that's going to continue. There are startups at the bottom of the escalator. You can see a few there. Um, there are many I could mention. Uh, Enos, I thought was fascinating, for example. But there are three that I want to highlight here in this slide. The first is Priya. And Priya works with a, a very important purpose to improve medication adherence. And I have parents, they're in their, now in their 90s. Uh, we went through a period where medication adherence was kind of a, a problem, a challenge. This is a really important topic. And I hope they're going to be really successful. I have a lot of confidence that they will be. In addition, there's Maro, who focuses on another important purpose, which is, um, sorry, <laughs> which is mental health and helping people, especially young people uh, who need help with anxiety, depression, et cetera. And yeah, I'm sure you're all seeing this too. Uh, this is a growing need and a very important need. And then Lura, this one's interesting. It's a diagnostic through a device they put in your mouth and they could diagnose things from your saliva. It's fascinating. I don't know how, exactly how it works. I wish I could do a presentation on that. Um, but they're really onto something. So they could sense different disease states from your um, salivary glands. And they're going to do more and more of this. So these are just three examples that kind of pop up as interesting, you know, worth us investing time in technology to try to help them be successful. 
So the rest of this morning, we have a panel discussion uh, led by Jacob Brown. He's a researcher who's been working with us. I happen to know the panelists who are on this. It's going to be very exciting, I promise. Uh, Susan Robertson is here. Uh, she helps organizations like Fortune 500 companies in the area of creative thinking. I had a preview this morning. I saw a few of her slides. I know you're going to be fascinated by that. Uh, Dean Andrews, who deal, works with startups and our developer community, some of the things I've mentioned, uh, is going to present next. And then Mike Fuller has another panel presentation for startups. So we have an action-packed morning. Uh, this is all about empowering developers and empowering organizations. And this day is for you. Uh, before I move forward, though, and close, I just want to point out two very important people here. Uh, Tom Woodfin. Tom leads our data platforms. Tom leads our data platforms development team, and it's an amazing team of super bright people. Whatever they tell me, I just believe it. <laughs> the other person I want to point out is Arnie Epstein. And Arnie's in charge of development for all of our healthcare products. Uh, so another very, very talented group. I think we're lucky to have such great developers, and I think it's worth celebrating developers today. So with that, I'm going to close, and we're going to move on to the rest of this morning. I thank you for being here on day three. Thank you for coming here, and thank you for working with us. Thank you. Thank you.